right, so you click on this video so you know it's going to be all about how to get your first job in pen testing. Now, I've made many videos across my channel about getting a job in cybersecurity. This one is going to be specifically about how to get a job as a pen tester, but I'll list any other relevant videos down below in the description. And sorry if you can hear some birds outside there. Uh, being birds. So first I'm going to start off with getting the actual experience to get into pen testing. Now again, my previous video about how I personally learned how to hack is going to be the most relevant here. So I would definitely watch that video if you guys want an in-depth overview of what tools and applications and things that I actually use to learn how to hack. But usually people go about doing this about one of two ways, which is first getting that free experience online with Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, and different hacker training platforms that you can use. And then number two, which is going through a hacker or a pen tester bootcamp. So both of these options obviously have their pros and cons. The first one is obviously free, so it's a lot easier for anyone to go on those platforms. Well, actually, Try Hack Me does have a premium version, and if you have the free account, you can only do about an hour a day, I think, which I think is good for, you know, continuous learning. But I do think as a beginner, you want to be spending more than just one hour a day doing those platforms. But I believe Hack the Box should be free for the most part. So I'll definitely start with those. Watch any walkthrough videos. If you're a complete beginner and don't know where to start, look up the walkthroughs of the Try Hack Me or the Hack the Box challenges that you want to do. Of course, read those and understand what other people are thinking while they're going through them. And don't be shy about it because obviously as a beginner, you don't know where to start. So it's important to learn from people who already know what they're doing. And yeah, I would just read a whole bunch of those and try to figure out which tools are most interesting to you and try to cultivate your own learning path for the pen testing tools that you want to learn first. And then the second route is going through a bootcamp. So obviously in a bootcamp, you're going to have a very structured curriculum that is already created for you. You don't have to worry about what you have to learn. As long as you choose a good cybersecurity pen testing bootcamp, then they're really gonna do the rest for you. But of course the downside is that bootcamps cost a lot of money. I actually previously made a video on the top seven cybersecurity bootcamps. Now these aren't specifically for pen testing, but they are very popular cybersecurity bootcamps that many people use to kind of get their foot in the door. But another downside is that most of those bootcamps cost, I believe in the five figure range, so at least $10,000. And of course some of them are six months. So six months of bootcamp, for about 10k compared to a college degree for four years which you know obviously is a lot more money than that you know the pros and cons definitely outweigh itself when you're comparing a bootcamp to a university but when you're comparing bootcamp to free things and free courses online which by the way i also have a video on free courses that you can find online for cybersecurity, and i'll link that below but you really have to know yourself because if you're someone who learns better in a setting where everything is structured there's a teacher telling you what to do there's group sessions with other students in the bootcamp then i will go for the bootcamp just so you don't waste your time trying to figure things out by yourself and eventually not getting anywhere and then giving up obviously that is not the route i want you guys to take but i would still say start with the free resources online and if you don't think that you're getting anywhere after a few weeks or a month or two then maybe consider going for a boot camp but of course do your research and choose the best one for you that is also at a good price point for you because a lot of them do have payment plans as well as scholarships for minority groups that may not be in cybersecurity so that's definitely a good option too all right so the next two things are kind of going hand in hand which are learning to use the cybersecurity tools that are very popular and then also learning the most common vulnerabilities in cybersecurity or the OWASP top 10 if you want to make it easier for yourself so in my case i actually started with hacking tools because when I got started in pen testing, I had mentors who were in ethical hacking and red team and they actually just told me popular tools which are essentially Burst Suite, Nmap, Wireshark. Metasploit from what I hear is a very loud tool so you're not really gonna use it in a real world scenario but it's really good for practice because they basically have pre-made scripts created for exploits and you know as a script kitty you really don't have to do that much to run those tools or to do remote code execution or any kind of intermediate or advanced hack. So of course start by learning the most popular tools and I listed a handful of them, but really another good way to go about doing this is to, is to look up your dream company that you wanna work for as a pen tester and then basically go through the job qualifications or requirements of what that role is looking for because some companies might use different tools, they might use different vulnerability scanners, just overall different pen testing tools. So as long as it's not something super niche that you're learning that might only be applicable to that one job, then I would say go for it. But also don't spend too much time learning too many tools. You really just wanna learn a handful, like two or three is probably good. If you can use those at an intermediate level, then honestly, that's already pretty good. Obviously, you don't have to look up the top 10 most popular tools in cybersecurity and then learn all of those because if you're just a beginner level in all 10 of those tools, then 
in an interview, you're not going to be able to speak in depth about any of them. And it's not really going to help you get the job, even if you know all about these tools, but at a very high level. So yeah, I would definitely say pick and choose the two or three tools that are most interesting to you, or you can really see yourself using in the job that you want to do. And then you can really easily find some free YouTube tutorials about how to use them. And nowadays documentation for cybersecurity and tech tools in general is pretty good. So I'd really go through that documentation, understand what it does. Uh, you can watch a few Medium articles about walkthroughs for those tools. Yeah, that's probably how you're gonna get started in the beginning. And the next thing, of course, common vulnerabilities. So now that you know how to use these tools in some capacity, Capacity, you can go on and try to use them to find vulnerabilities or exploits that are commonly found in the wild or commonly found in weak exploitable websites. So I'm not saying to go out there and hack into someone's website that is not legal and you should not do that but there are sites out there like the DBWA which is a website that is purposely vulnerable for you and me to go and try to practice our skills on. I believe Nmap also has an endpoint where you can test on as well. So yeah definitely just don't go hacking into random people's sites. I previously made a video on the OWASP top 10. For the older version, there is a new 2021 list that is out. So if you guys are interested in checking that video, you can, but I would also refer to that new list that is out. And I'm sure other YouTubers have made video overviews about that list as well. But yeah, most companies base their vulnerabilities that they're looking for in their pen testing teams based on the OWASP top 10, which are just the top 10 most common vulnerabilities found in web applications. And obviously as a beginner, you probably won't be expected to know how to find every single one of these or exploit every single one of these, but it is good to know in the back of your mind during an interview or if someone is asking you questions about telling me about a time and they have to do with hacking or pen testing, then it is kind of nice to go through maybe the top five or if you have time, the top 10 vulnerabilities on that list and then basically try to find it practice examples that you can do online so you're able to answer any interview questions that you could potentially get that are asking about your experience working with those vulnerabilities. And I'm sure Hack the Box, Try Hack Me both have lots of examples. Okay, so now that you kind of know the foundations of getting that hands-on practice hacking experience with Hack the Box and other similar sites, knowing how to proficiently use some popular hacking tools as well as the common vulnerabilities, then now I would go on to do something that is a bit more hands-on and that is to create your own hacking walk through blog and obviously this isn't going to be everyone's cup of tea but i do think that it makes you stand out from a crowd and let's say your resume has all the keywords about the cybersecurity tools out there about the different vulnerabilities and practice things that you've done and that's all on your resume and let's say you get through the ai funnel that looks at resumes and a recruiter is now looking at your resume compared to someone else's and maybe they're kind of similar in the way that you know most beginner cybersecurity resumes are and the thing that's going to set you apart is the fact that you put in the extra work to write out your thoughts and your mind dump of what you do and what you think about while you're going through a pen testing problem. Now, obviously the recruiter may not be technical enough to understand what you're doing in a try hack me problem, but if this resume gets passed to the hiring manager for the actual pen testing team, and they're able to look at your blog of all the try hack me or hack the box problems that you have done, and they're able to see your screenshots, what you've done, your train of thought, if you went the wrong way and then you backtracked and then tried something else, you know, all those pivots that you make in your problem solving and how you think, that's really what the pen testing manager wants to know. They want to know what you think about how you how you go about problem solving, especially in an ethical hacking perspective. So if you're able to lay all that out in a blog for someone to access, and blogs are free to make, you can just create a WordPress or a Square website and they're all free. They don't even need a freemium subscription. I don't pay anything for my Square site. So yeah, this won't cost anything to you. It would really just be a labor of love in terms of putting all of your work online. And you know, it might just help someone else that that is also a beginner that might need some guidance and wants to see it from a beginner point of view or perspective. So it's kind of a win-win in that way where where it kind of pushes you closer to getting that job in pen testing and, and you might also end up really liking the hacking blog that you create and it's just a fun thing to do. In your spare time, if you're already doing these try hack me problems, you might as well document it for future reference and it might help you in future problems that you're working on as well. If you think that, hey, I saw something similar like this on try hack me, let me try to go back and see what my train of thought was and you have all of it documented out and i'm a huge sucker for documenting your hacking process because i've gone through capture the flag challenges where i did not document anything and i wish i did i kick myself every time i think about those few capture the flags that i did in the beginning because i didn't think i needed to document them i just found a flag and then i moved on to the next one and i completely forgot my first few flags after just a few weeks so 
yeah that's why documentation is really important because it really helps you know where your train of thought is going even if you're not someone who likes to document and write stuff believe me it's really going to help you if you are writing down your train of thoughts when it comes to pen testing and you're probably going to be writing pen testing reports anyway on the job so you can kind of think of it as a buffer for that Okay, next thing on this list is to keep up with major hacks. So obviously, if you're a normal civilian, you probably hear about the big hacks that happen. For example, a few big ones, I guess, in the last decade or so are the Target hack that everyone was worried about because a lot of people go to Target, as well as hacks that have happened to the credit bureaus that you probably have heard about throughout the years. It happens, honestly, it's happened more than a handful of times. But again, those are all the big breaches that you hear about. But obviously, on an annual basis, there are more than just those big hacks that, that impact cybersecurity organizations. So if you watched any of my previous videos on getting into cybersecurity, I always mentioned to keep up with cybersecurity news and I use a tool specifically called Feedly, not sponsored, but basically it combines a whole bunch of RSS feeds for popular cybersecurity blogs that I chose, um, but of course you can choose your own and compiling all those together, you can just read all of your blogs in one app and it makes it really easy that you don't have to you know, go to multiple websites. It's all kind of filtered, funneled for you. And it's just a really easy way to just scroll through in the mornings if you want to see some big headliners of cybersecurity breaches or even updates on breaches like the log4j attack that happened that happened a few months ago and now no one even talks about it anymore you know these cybersecurity hacks just go by so quickly and or really on to the next but there are times during cybersecurity interviews where they ask you how you keep up with major hacks how you keep up with trending cybersecurity news so definitely two reasons to go about keeping up with the news first of all it's good for your career because then you know where cybersecurity as a sector is heading what the attackers are doing so so you're better able to defend yourself and your organization and then the second thing is that a potential employer might expect you or want you to keep up with cybersecurity news and they may even ask you about it during an interview so yeah would definitely go about that route and set up you know just a quick cybersecurity rss feed of news articles next thing is to try or practice with some bug bounties now there's a lot of bug bounty hunting websites out there and if you don't know what a bug bounty is they're basically websites where companies can agree to have some some ethical hackers go and try to exploit some vulnerability or find some vulnerabilities on their websites or applications or anything that they're trying to you know protect from real hackers they want the good hackers to find them first and then you know the company can go fix it and they'll usually pay you some amount of money if you find a vulnerability and depending on the level of severity that the vulnerability is so obviously there are tens of thousands of ethical hackers trying to find a bug bounty so obviously you may not be successful as a beginner but a lot of these bug bounty sites also have practice problems based on bug bounties that hackers have actually found and integrity is a great example of this this one i think i mentioned in a lot of my videos because it was recommended to me by one of my ethical hacking mentors and we were actually walking through one of these problems and there's just so many steps compared to try hack me and hack the box in these bug bounty problems that it really showed you a real world example of what a ethical hacker or a red teamer might be doing on the job so yeah you can easily look up integrity uh, monthly hacking challenges and they just provide you the site some details and, and you just kind of play along and do your thing but there's also walkthroughs out there that you can use as a beginner obviously you should do that even experienced pen testers use these walkthroughs so don't be afraid don't be shy to read those it's not cheating it's learning and jumping off of that obviously the next thing is going to be about finding a mentor slash networking and i'm sorry i'm going really fast but my camera's about to die so i'm trying to finish this before my camera dies so i've had many many mentors in just my last two and a half years of my cybersecurity career and honestly they're one of the best resources that you could ever have as someone who is coming into cybersecurity because not only do they help you when you don't know how to move forward with a hacking problem or or if you don't know something another way that they're helpful is that they can also help you try to figure out the trajectory of your career so i previously made a video on the pen testing career path that you can check out below but but something that influenced me creating that video is because there's so many ways to get into pen testing obviously you don't have to start as a pen tester and then get to red team and your career could have so many different curves and you know you can leave pen testing and then come back later so there's so many different things that a mentor could teach you in pen testing and one of them is kind of navigating your career for what you want to do and of course they're a great resource when you are trying to find or make that next level or next jump in your job or your career so usually how i find my mentors is was actually through capture the flag challenges the ones internal in my company there was a leaderboard and there are also people who sign up to be mentors and i really just reached out or maybe they gave a presentation or a walkthrough of a problem 
or a bug that they found that was really unique and I reached out afterwards and basically talked to them. So obviously in my case I was lucky because I was already in my company and asking people I already kind of work with I guess to be my mentors. But another good way to go about this is to look at the cybersecurity walkthrough blogs that you may have read during your hack the box or try hack me days and it was a blog that you always go back to and you find yourself always reading their blogs and how they think that would definitely reach out to them i'm sure their website has some kind of contact information or you could leave a comment and try to see if you can get in touch and see if they are willing to be your mentor or of course reaching out through linkedin and finding a pen tester who is in a company that you might already want to work for is another great option as well and i previously made a video on what to do if you can't find that first cybersecurity job as well that has more tips on all these things on getting experience resumes etc so yeah i'll link that below in the description thank you guys so much for watching my camera is dying so i'm trying to end this please like this video and subscribe if you liked it and share if you found it helpful with other people to spread the word about cybersecurity careers and opportunities um i post videos every wednesday and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye